Here we go again. It's been more than two months. Look at that. Trop in, trop in, trop out. That's me. Old trop in, trop out marks me. Two months later. Tell you what happened, right? I stopped playing Star Ocean about the time Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition came out on the Switch. Where's the door? Right, here we go. And then I stopped playing Xenoblade Chronicles because The Last of Us 2 came out. And then I played through that. And then, to be honest, by the time I finished The Last of Us 2, I forgot what I was doing. I completely forgot I was doing this. Uh, and then, uh, a few days ago, I started playing Dan Machi on the Switch. Oh, my God. And I was like, this is a woeful RPG. I was like, oh, yeah, I was playing Star Ocean 4. So here we go. Notice I'm not fighting anyone. I can't be bothered. Let's just get on with it, shall we? Have I got Miura on my team? I do, yeah. Hang about. Why's why's he only got one MP? No HP. Limel's dead. What's going on? Oh, for, oh god. Right. Let's go back. I, speaking of the Last of Us 2, I feel like I've kind of missed the boat on the Last of Us 2. It's a bit late to really start talking about it, and even if it wasn't, I'm not sure this is the place. But let's have a little chit chat anyway. I actually don't. I'm not that interested in talking about the Last of Us 2. In my opinion, it's a fantastic game, and I played through it. With hey, tell you what, this is my analogy to the Last of Us 2. I would compare it to the Last Jedi. You know, the second film in the new Star Wars trilogy. In the I watched Last Jedi in the cinemas, and I enjoyed it. And I came out of it thinking, like, what a fun Star Wars film that is. And it never even crossed my mind that anyone would find it controversial. But it turns out The Last Jedi was like the most controversial Star Wars film there ever was. I mean, until Rise of Skywalker came out. Oh no, Rise of Skywalker isn't controversial. Everyone just agrees that that's shit, don't they? But like, and I had the same experience with Last of Us 2. And I played it, I was like, wow, what an amazing game on every level. You know, like the production of the game, you know, like from the way it looks, like graphically and all that locking. Like, wow, the motion capture is so amazing. So technically it's a marvel. I found the story was interesting. I was engage with the characters to such a point where there was a point in the game where I thought I'm gonna stop playing now not because I wasn't enjoying the game but because I was like so my conviction was that the story should end at a certain point I'm like Ellet is going to do something crazy here I'm like why can't the story just stop here and then I realized I'm like the story can stop here if I stop playing when I was enjoying the gameplay so much, I didn't want to stop playing because then I'd miss out on like on stuff. I mean, I'd miss out on part of the game. So I had to finish the story even though I didn't want to. So I had real strong feelings about it. Everything about it was great. And it never occurred to me that any part of it would be controversial. Is there a shop in this town or what? Right, there is the book. I think the book is the shop. Never occurred to me that The Last of Us 2 would be controversial to anyone for any reason. And then it turns out it's massively controversial. It's like, oh, what? Where am I going? I'm going completely the wrong way. I've got minimap confusion. Right, here we go. <sighs> anyway, what I really wanted to talk about The Last of Us 2, what really pissed me off about it, was going into um, some abandoned apartments and things. And there's a couple of areas in the game, right? What do we need? You there. I learned a lot from that experience. I felt so ashamed to be a crook, you know? What's he talking about? I wasn't paying attention to the first sentence. If I can spread my knowledge to others, blah, 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 blah. I literally don't care what he's talking about. This isn't what I want. Buy items. Skill manual. Anthropology. No, 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 no. I should buy these, shouldn't I? Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested right now. I want an item shop because I've run out of recovery items. I remembered that much from two months ago. Oh, yeah. So you're exploring these. Is this good? You're exploring these abandoned apartments and stuff, and then in a few of them you'll notice there's some dusty old PS3s, and it's like the Gen 1 fat PS3s, you know the ones that are like a big oval. That was my PS3, and I had one of those for like 10 years until it died. What I didn't appreciate was the reminder of it, because right, weapons, no, usable items, blueberries and red herbs. Useful for throat illnesses. What? Your silence. All right, yeah, that's right, right. Well, I've done that. I've done that. What was it talking about? PS3. Yeah, PS3 is in The Last of Us 2. So I had a PS3, a fat PS3, for like 10 years. And then it died. And when my PS3 died, I realized that all my PS3 games were effectively dead. Some of them weren't, all right? Um, some of the old PS1 classics that I bought through PSN, you can play those on the Vita. 
some games, like very few, like games like Journey have a PS4 version that you could that you just own if you buy it on the PS3. Most games, though, it's like um, Resonance of Fate. I bought that on the PS3, but when they release it on PS4, it's like, no, you just have to buy it again. I'm like, right, annoying. Nino Kune, no, you have to buy it again because it's the definitive edition now. We've upgraded it. It's like, fine. Anyway, so I was quite upset with my PS3 there because a lot of PS3 games I really like. And these games like you just can't play anywhere. You know, like Asura's Wrath, Lollipop Chainsaw, Tales of Zillia 1 and 2, Tales of Grace's F, I think, at this point. And it's like, if I want to play those games, my only option is to either get my PS3 repaired, which it turns out is like prohibitively expensive if you want Sony to do it. And... Or if you buy like a kit, it's like it just doesn't work. Or it works for a few months and then your PS3 is dead again. Well, that's no good. And you can't buy a new PS3 anymore because Sony aren't making them. So my only option really was to buy a second-hand PS3. And I did. And then like a year or so after that, not even maybe less than a year after that, that PS3 died. I'm like, that's it. I'm not just buying a new PS3 every 12 months. And I just had to accept that my entire library was dead. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe the PS5 will be backwards compatible. But Sony's approach to the PS5 and backwards compatibility is woeful. The official line, as far as I know right now, is that they're saying the top 100, most of the top 100 PS4 games will be backwards compatible to PS5. I mean, first of all, what does that even mean? You say most of the top 100. What's that? Is that 99? Is that 75? Is that 51? How many is most of the top 100? And then when you say top 100, it's like, what does that mean? Top 100 most critically acclaimed, top 100 best selling, top 100 as chosen by some rando at Sony Entertainment. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Just give me the list. It's not hard. Just publish it on a website. You don't have to tell me. Just let me find out some way. Is this the way? Yeah, sure it is. Um, so that was Wolf. I'm like, are you going to give me any announcement on PS3? No, no. And I'm sitting there looking at in playing The Last of Us 2, looking at this reminder of the PS3, this dusty old abandoned PS3 in a bombed out apartment. I'm like, this is it, and this is Sony's attitude to the PS3 all over. They don't care. And then Sony had that big PS5 reveal. Remember where they had the wall of black balls that the PS5 emerged from, and it just looks like kind of dreadful. Err uh, Right, here it is, this is the magic wall in it. To be continued, this is going to be a story scene, no doubt. Oh my god. <sighs> I knew it. I knew it all along. It was a, felt, a false wall, one brick wide. Backers could have punched through that, no problem. In fact, FaZe could have probably punched through that, no problem. Are you kidding? Are you telling me I had to go through all the trouble to get through that? Ridiculous. Anyway, so Sony had their big PS5 reveal thing. And they opened the press conference with the classic PS1 logo and like a montage of stuff they're showing like Crash Bandicoot and stuff like that. I'm like, no way they're hack they're showing us the legacy of PlayStation. This is what they're gonna announce it. And not only do they not announce any backwards compatibility or any PlayStation legacy stuff, they just want to shove the old-fashioned logo in your face. Let's have a fight. They want to shove the old logo in your face at the start of the press conference just to, like, a little bit of nostalgia to be like, remember, you like PlayStation. You know, stick with us. But they've no interest in preserving that legacy because I guess that's not where the money's at. And they made the statement that's like, we believe in the advantages of moving from one generation to another. What advantages? What are you talking about? The advantage of abandoning 20 years of legacy. The advantage of what? Of me abandoning like the 150 odd games that I bought on the PS3 and just never being able to play those games again unless I buy them back for like 30, 40, 50 quid a pop when you remaster them in 4K, not even. Have I been turned into a pumpkin? There are no advantages. I don't know what they're talking about. Right, I won that fight even though I'm a pumpkin. Great. I'm not letting you kids <laughs> and I was just I was furious just looking at it. This is I spent so much time talking about this, and I don't know what point I'm making. The only point is that I'm pissed off. Yeah. What? So I'm poisoned. Yeah, get rid of it. I hate status effects that persist after the battle ends. I hate them. 
and somewhere along the way, all RPGs got together in their big house. Someone else got poison. Bacchus, Christ. Anyway, somewhere along the way, all RPGs got together and just agreed. It's like, shall we all agree? All status effects, most of them, will dissipate once a battle ends, but poison will persist forever. Agreed. All agreed. And then that's it. All RPGs everywhere. Poison persists after battles. It's annoying. Right. So, Sodi's press conference. Yeah. Oh. So, I'm looking. I'm playing The Last of Us 2. I'm seeing these old PSDs. I'm like, it's a sign. It's not. It just, it just reminds me of all the games that I can't play. At Sony's press conference, they open with the old PS1 logo and a montage of old PS PlayStation games. And then they just deny it. They say, no, there, is, there isn't any backwards compatibility. There isn't going to be. We believe in the advantages of moving from one generation to another. Whatever that means for me, it means nothing. And then, and then it just ends. And I'm left there thinking, do you know what? I've had enough. I've had enough of PlayStation. I think I'm going to be a PC gamer from now on. At least, what is that doing? I'll just keep lighting these and find out what happens. At least with PC, if a game's no longer supported by any official channels, there's someone out there who'll find a way to make it work. Oh my god. <laughs> what? There was a burning corpse inside that part. This game's quite disgusting really, isn't it? Right, how do you change characters? Yes, we've got it. We've got it. Okay. How does this game work now? Oh my god. Right, how do you do it? Yes, circle. Right, we'll find out what this blind side is. Let's get someone's attention. Oh my god, she's woeful. Alright. Here we go. What's the blind side? She teleports and that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna control her because she's incredibly slow. But well, that was pretty cool. Rather an what was I saying about Sony and that? Oh yeah, about PC. I'm talking about PCs. So at least if a game isn't supported officially, there's someone out there who will find a way. There's someone who will be passionate enough. There's going to be another corpse. Right, no good. Do I... Right, something to do with the statue, isn't there? I, need, I really need to finish my point about PC games and that, don't I? So the point is, I feel like if... If I invest in PC at least from... Oh, there's another guy. At least if I invest in PC, Jesus man. At least if I invest in PC games, I feel like it's not a wasted investment. I feel like my purchases are secure. Like once I own a game on Steam, that's it. You know, if I buy a new PC, I can still download Steam, open up my library, and there it is. It's not gonna suddenly, all of a sudden, one day be like, yeah, those like hundred odd games that you bought, you can't play them anymore because we've stopped making the console and the old consoles are all dying. You know. Which is how I feel about PlayStation now, and I'm just like, screw ya. It really did. It, it, it like flipped a switch in my mind watching that presentation. As much as I enjoyed The Last of Us 2, I just... I just can't be doing with console gaming if there's... Oh. Well, who's got... What the hell is that? What's the school mean? Do you know what? I'm just going to switch him off my team and not worry about it. Um, who do you want? FaZe. Come here, FaZe. My best buddy, FaZe. Okay, so let's say that where he's pointing the halberd is where I want to be lighting up. Oh, who the... Oh, it's just Bacchus in it. I don't care. So PC is where it's at for me, I think. Yep. Right, this is looking promising. And especially because recently, Persona 4 was released on the PC. That's a huge deal for me. And then, Horizon Zero Dawn come out on the PC. I'm like, there's no reason to own consoles anymore. There isn't, apart from the Switch, which I love. Yeah, oh my god. So, remember right back when the Switch launched, the, uh, they announced, Atlas announced the Shin Megami Tensei game? Got it. I'm a flipping genius. And they finally said, right, SMT5 next year it's coming and they announced smt nocturne as well this is amazing I an mean, rpg paradise right so that's my, my little rant about uh what was i talking about about games and consoles i had to get out of my system since it's been building up for two months uh 
Oh my god, right, I'm gonna have to start out that status effect on back because I'm sick of the little flashing red light and I'm going like, Gah! every two seconds. So, not use skills, skills, items, use items. What is it then? Let's see if we can guess. A little skull. Cures poison, paralysis, frozen, silence, fog, pumpkin, curse. That'll be it, what is curse? Nice. Where to next? Right. This is exciting, isn't it? Oh, look, it's a crystal from Final Fantasy. Examine. The crystal gleams with the power of light. Okay. The enemies of my Looks faith! Like. <laughs> They're two foot high. They sound like children. The enemies of my faith! They've been groomed by whatever religion this is. Let's murder them. This game is atrocious. I've lost a blood here on that. I haven't played this game for two months and I've forgotten how you play it. I'm just walking up to it and smashing the X button. It's just another day, lighting pots. I can get that. Alright, that's why there's two of them. So it could be this one, but it's not because this guy's pointing over here. Yeah. This game's really clever. How are you with gimmicks in dungeons anyway? I don't really like it. it kind of gets on my nerves a little bit. It has to be a really good gimmick for me to enjoy it. And this is just kind of whatever, isn't it? I can that. Treasure chest back there. I don't care. I don't care what was in that treasure chest. I bought new equipment that I haven't even equipped. What the? This must be the guardian of the purgatorium. Somehow I doubt that diplomacy will be very effective here. I haven't saved at all. And I haven't been fighting, so I'm going to be underleveled. <sighs> here we go. Here goes nothing. Did it, 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 did it. Come on. Whoa, what the, where's that coming from? This is bad, isn't it? Like, this is a bad game. I don't know why I'm just having that revelation now, but... Combat and RPGs is typically quite bad, isn't it? What do you think? <laughs> why did I say that? Why am I having that? Oh, I'm just like, I'm just looking at the way it's like bouncing around here. And like, I'm thinking of a game that has really good combat, like say Astral Chain. Well, that's what that game's all about. Whereas RPGs are more about the story and, and the customization of your party and stuff like that. Actually doing the combat. It's rarely the enjoyable part of that. Strange. Anyway, while I'm thinking about RPGs in general, what's the other thing? Like, maybe I should just use this episode to get out all the gaming gripes that have built up over the past two months that I just haven't. You know, I was like, oh, maybe I should make a YouTube video after, about this, and I just couldn't be asked. I'm like, well, no one cares. <laughs> but now I am making a video. Let's just go on about all the shit I've been thinking about. Paper Mario. Nintendo released a new Paper Mario. Or should I say Nintendo didn't release a new Paper Mario. If Nintendo don't want to make Paper Mario games, they don't have to. They can just stop, you know. But like, somewhere along the way they've been like, right, I guess we should pretend to make Paper Mario games. My history with Paper Mario is played the first one, loved it. Played the second one, loved it. The third one, Super Paper Mario, played it as I was all right. The fourth one, Paper Mario sticker stat, I never played because I read a review of it. And it's like, this game has no companions. You don't get XP from the fight, so all you do when you're fighting is expend your own resources. I'm like, hmm, sounds dumb for an RPG. And at that point, I fell off the Paper Mario franchise and I forgot it existed. And they made one for the Wii U, I think. It was called Paper Mario's Paper Jam or something. No, not Paper Jam. Paper Jam is a 3DS one. Paper Mario's Paint Bucket or whatever it's called on the Wii U. And then Paper Jam was like, was it like a crossover with the Mario and Luigi franchise for 3DS? I just couldn't be asked. It's like, make a proper Paper Mario game, and it's like, no. And then they announced one for the Switch, and they announced it like maybe a month before it was released or something like that. That's really close to the release date when they announced it. And it looked quite promising, it looked great. But like clearly, there's been some edicts in Nintendo. Where it's like you just you can't make an RPG. You just can't. You're not allowed to make a standard Paper Mario game. There has to be some gimmick. There has to be some twist. I think it's Miyamoto. I think Miyamoto was pretty down on those on RPGs in general. It's like they're dumb. You know? It's like this isn't what a game is. So ever since Super Paper Mario, there has to be something else. It's like so some some guys had the genius idea of taking the phrase turn-based combat. Turn-based? What if it was literally turn-based? Whoa, hold on, guys. It's like, and so 
the, t the combat in Paper Mario's Paper Adventure, what's it called? Paper Mario the Origami Bastard. Is like... It's set on a set of circles. Set on a set. I'm not even paying attention to this fight. <laughs> I could have probably finished that half an hour ago if I wasn't going about Paper Mario. It's set on a set of concentric circles. And you're spinning the circles. And it's not really like... And a, a turn-based RPG, turn RPG combat. It's more of like this ring puzzle that you've got to solve. It's like, okay, kind of fair enough. And I'd be willing to accept this sort of um, unconventional combat system. I would embrace it, in fact, if it was part of the trappings of what made those first two Paper Mario games great. There's, they, they undercut the whole system of, of an RPG by not having experience points. It's bizarre to me. And the idea that you don't have a party, this cast of interesting characters for the story, that they've gone like, nah, you don't need that. Guess what? You do need that. Put it in there. If you're not going to make a proper Paper Mario game, then just don't bother. It's like... And it looks so promising. Every, And I've said this before, that Nintendo have been on a hot streak recently. Whenever a franchise gets released on the Switch, it's usually like the best version of that franchise. You know, like Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. You know, they're really good. Luigi's Mansion 3 is probably the best Luigi's Mansion. But this Paper Mario, man, it depresses me. It saddens me. Right, anyway, well that's sort of griping about that. Point is I haven't played it. And I've read conflicting reviews on Paper Mario. Some people like it. Some people think it's god they go, this game is amazing, it's so charming. But the people who fall into that camp tend to be the people who come to Paper Mario's Origami Jam. And they're like, what's this? Oh, it's great. But people are coming to it saying like, I love Paper Mario. By which I mean the original Paper Mario and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. I love that's my Paper Mario. Is this gonna live up to that? No, it doesn't. And those people are annoyed. That's me, that's the camp I'm in. I haven't even played it. Maybe I should play it, but I don't feel like it's spending 50 quid on a game that I just don't like the look of. Even though I started this video by talking about the Dan Machi RPG. Dan Machi, what's that? Well, it's an anime. Over here the anime is called Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Which is one of the worst titles for an anime I've ever heard. So that's why I refer to it as Dan Magic, because it's easier to say. And that's what it's called, pretty much. That's what fans of the anime basically call it. Whoa. Its lifetime reading has disappeared. In its place, however... Oh, the doggy transformed. Hey, that looks like Grandpa's ring. Light ring. Great. We need to keep moving. Okay. Oh, right, so I shoot the light ring at the crystal. I forgot this, so this, this game has like a sorcerer's ring style. Oh, there's a rumbo in yeah, I remember that. So Dan Machi is an anime set in a world that's kind of like a video game. So in this world, the characters level up and they fight monsters inside the titular dungeon, of which is it all right to try to pick up girls inside, turns out. You can have a go, but you'll probably not be a successful at it. Um, it's a fun anime. I've watched two seasons of Dan Machi. I've even watched the um, side story, the Sword Oratoria, that follows an alternate set of characters through the events of the first season. It's fun, it's alright. So being a fan of the anime, I wanted to like the game. And I bought it, even though I knew it would be awful. The signs that it would be awful were threefold. The first sign that the Dan Machi game would be awful was that the trailer, if you watch it, has no gameplay. The light ring is already charged. All oh, right, so I need to find. Oh, it'll be the doors that are covered in darkness. Got it. Right. We're on the right. It's fine. Surprise! I run right into him. Right. Whatever. Oh yeah. So the the first trailer for Dan Match had no gameplay in it. Warning sign number one. Warning sign number two was when I sought out gameplay by typing into YouTube. Whatever. Infinite Combat is the name of the game, but Combat spelled with an E on the end for some reason. The gameplay looked awful. So I was looking at it, and I had proof in front of my eyes. This looks awful. Third sign, when the game was released on eShop, which it was released ages ago, but for some reason it's only just come out in the UK on the eShop. The instant it was released, it was discounted. 
It was like, look, 20% off. Just buy it, will you, please? <sighs> oh, yeah, fourth one inside the game would be awful. It was getting awful reviews. <laughs> Uh, rather, should I say it wasn't getting reviews, like no one was reviewing it, except for sort of like niche YouTube channels. And when you went to those channels, they were mostly like either sort of like just being kind of polite about it, or just outright saying this game is awful. And I still bought it because I thought, because I want, I'll enjoy it. I don't care if it's bad, I'll enjoy it. I like these characters in this show, I like mindless like RPGs, I like the idea of just like mindlessly wandering through a dungeon, chopping up some foes, and gaining some experience and leveling up and doing, right, use the ring, light ring. Nice. And I thought, it'll be good to just have a sort of brainless dungeon crawler. Something to do while I'm re-watching Star Trek The Next Generation on Netflix again or whatever. Nice, runic metal. But it's, whoa, it's so bad, I can't explain how terrible it is. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. It's, it's such a niche game. And it, you, trust me, if you were to see it, you would it would take no convincing. You, you wouldn't need me to explain why it's bad. You would look at it and be like, why would anyone ever even buy this? Charge the light ring, nice. Oh no, no, no. Okay, where do I want to go? North, I think. I think this way. Oh, I should have been paying more attention instead of banging out of our game no one cares about. It doesn't help that the map looks like these two rooms aren't connected. The room I'm in now and the room just to the south of it doesn't look connected on the map at all. But it is. And so if there are multiple places like that on the map, it means the map is useless for finding your way around. Which is what a map is supposed to do. I think this is the most I've ever half assed playing this game. I haven't got a single gem on the bonus board. Alright, so I want to go through... Yeah, that'll be it, won't it? Because it's got that cross. So let's just charge up the ring. Alright, yeah, it looks like you can only use each crystal to charge the ring once. The crystal has lost its gleam. Damn. Contrived. It's contrived inconvenience. We'll give him a ring that can open up these cursed doors. Ah, but the ring can only hold one charge. And you have to find a crystal to charge the ring. But each crystal can only charge the ring once. It's like, oh my god. That's what I mean about gimmicks in dungeons. I'm not into it. This isn't improving the experience for me. I'm not like, oh, this is more fun. I'm glad I can't just walk to the place that I want to go to and get on with the story. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's dead. Have I got any fresh sage? I don't think I do because you couldn't buy any in the shop and I ran out last time. I remember that much. Tactics, escape. Yeah, and he's permanently dead. Some RPGs, if you die in battle, when you escape, you, the character goes to be having one HP, so that you, if you haven't got any revival items, you can at least, you can at least healing with items. But not this game, no. Nope. Okay, so I've got a couple of mages. Do they have spells, resurrection spells, use skills, healing, no, no, no. Someone's got... Someone's got resurrection, surely. Limmel? Healing. Fairy healing. No, they don't. No, I guess Edge is just dead then. we go for a save point, though. Oh, look at the size of this place. Oh, no. It's a potapalooza. Right. So this guy's pointing over here, I think. Right, oh lord, there's 20 odd of them. If I get this wrong as well, it's gonna... I think it's this one. Let's have a treasure chest. Yay. I just remembered this game has mimics in it, doesn't it? And for a second there I thought, should I just not bother opening that chest in case it's a mimic? My can't be arse levels are through the roof. Imagine I get it wrong. Imagine I go through this, like, fight, just like, lighting up 20 pots. Let me get it wrong. Seems like it's this one. I have to cross-reference my statues to be sure. Oh, it's pointing this direction now. Is it that one? Ooh, could be either one. Oh, look at this now. So it's one of those two. But which one? This is going to be difficult because any statue pointing to these is going to be way across the room. Right. Oh, and he's, and he's like 
pillars in the way. He's not even direct line of sight. Oh, here we go. So which one does it look like he's pointing at? From our perspective now, it's the one on the left, isn't it? It's clearly the one on the left. I get left and right confused a lot. I had to really struggle to think that this was the one on the left then. I don't know why that is. It's like my brain can't maintain the information that left is on this side, right's on the other side. You know, my brain says that's not really important, and it just and I have to figure it out every time. Right, I'm just gonna have to fight the bats, even though the bats murder me every time. Come on, I think why the bats murder me is I can't touch them. Did any of my attacks land there? I wish you could see the face I'm pulling right now. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just pulling this like this face uh, that's like I don't know. How do I describe the face I'm pulling right now? Where were you seeing it in real life? I'm not letting you kids beat me yet. You know, it's like cast your mind back to being at school, and you and you go, okay, lunchtime, and then one of your mates goes. We well, talk about lunchtime. There's like four more lessons before lunchtime, and you just can't believe it. The crushing reality of how depressingly awful life is just hits you in the face. And you pull the face. I'm pulling right now. I'm pulling the face again. I was like, I was just looking at it. Like, there's just a mess of particle effects or whatever. Just a spell that completely whited out the entire screen. I'm like, what am I looking at? Why am I playing this game? I'm tapping the X button and just watching my character swing their arms about in thin air because the enemy wandered off half an hour ago. What am I doing? Talk about our show and now go, huh? Talk about what? What'd she say then? I'm having to figure I think she I think she said talk about all show and no go. Like that's a phrase people say. Talk about all show and no go. Has anyone ever said in your life all show no go? All show, no go. No. So you can't say talk about all show, no go if no one ever says all show, no go. That's how it... When you say talk about it, it has to be something people commonly say, doesn't it? Surely. Do you know what I mean? Like in an action movie, like, let's say... Like in, a, in an action movie, like someone's in a car chase, and then a bad guy's in the back of the car that you didn't even notice, and the bad guy pops up and starts strangling. It'd be probably in a Bond movie, like strangling Bond in the front seat, and then he just like reverse headbutts him and knocks the guy out. And then Bond would say, "Talk about a backseat driver," because people, because backseat driver is a common phrase. Is that, why am I so hung up on this? My brain's occupied with aligning pots. It's that one there, and it's clearly that one. I'm worried it's going to be the one in the corner. It can't be because that guy's not pointing at it. Right, it's this one. Yes. There we go. What? Are you absolutely kidding me? All of that all of that and it just makes these steps go down look at it just hop off look it's barely the height of edge maverick just hop off the edge i'd be happy doing that oh my god just like flip your bum over the side scoot over and just drop down it's not even that far jesus christ i know it Oh, I can't be bothered. I know in RPGs, like, you suspend your disbelief, don't you? Like, you're walking along, and there's a treasure chest on the other side of, like, a little stream. And you're like, you could hop over that stream, but there isn't a jump button in this game. You just accept that in this universe, there's no jumping. And then you find a way around, like, a little back alley behind a house somewhere, and there's a tiny little bridge, and then you've navigated the map, and then your reward is this little treasure chest. But, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even understand where I'm supposed to be going. Okay, I activated the steps that go down. Whoopee, now what? Oh no! Right, so we need a light ring to get through there. Oh no, I did that wrong. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh well, let's fight the monster inside the pot. 
<laughs> oh no! Right, here we go. Can you just escape this battle? No, you can't. You have to do it. Oh, no, no. Fair enough. You know, it won't be much of a punishment if you just escape it. It's my punishment for half assing the game, for not giving a shit about this game rules, for not respecting it enough to go along with these stupid bullshit gimmicks. Oh. I guess you can't blindside an enemy if they have a 360 degree attack range. That's cool. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh. Come on. Mm, yeah, great, great. Good thing those stairs appeared. Otherwise, they never would have made up here. It's ridiculous. We've got Bacchus. He's 20 foot tall. You could probably just step up there without using the stairs. Just one giant stride up to the top. Disbelief. Suspend your disbelief. Like how... It was absolutely 100% necessary to return to Trot and pick up the key card rather than just make our way through that one paper thin wall that drops out the door. I mean, it's not paper thin. An average person couldn't get through it, no way. But these aren't average people, are they? More of this. Like, the game. The game has kept up its enthusiasm for this point at the pot puzzle way longer than I have. I think I'd have done it once. But this game's like, oh, whoa. What did. The pot. It just changed its mind? What? Well, there's a twist. Right, I think the order was. It didn't change his mind, it was showing me the order. I think this is the order. Oh, so here's me saying the game's like, fond of this little thing, and then it just changes it up. Shut my mouth. All right. When we get to Sarah, she'd be like, where were you? Like, you wouldn't believe the time we had getting through this place. I mean, she, I'm, I'm saying she'll say, where were you? That is if, how was I surprised then? What right into it, man? Hmm. All right, I tell you what, let's do a bit of exploring. Blunder my way through. Oh, I can't be bothered. Look at the size of that guy. This is a room with a giant monster in it. Don't care. <laughs> That's how long my urge came up. I was like, actually, maybe I should make an effort and explore these rooms. No. No. Hello. Here we go. Story scene. Secret agent phase. Why is phase in, in front? Why is he giving the orders? Distribution of the remedy cannot be stopped. There is no more point in spreading the stone sickness. Asmodeus' resurrection is only a matter of time. How I yearn to hear the White Maiden's cry of death. Why do these people want I to mean, resurrect Asmodeus? They know that he's going to burn the world in a yearn. giant fireball. That must mean she's still alive. What's that shabby rag? This? It's what those black cloaked hermits wear. This belonged to the one I offered up to uh -oh. Asmodeus just this morning. Uh-oh. The Archfiend will walk a path opened by their blood. The least I can do is allow their worldly possessions to bask in his magnificence. That's a, one of the strangest bits of logic I've ever heard. The least I can do is wave things around so that if anyone knows who this scarf belonged to, they'll be really upset about it. At dawn, the black hermit's souls openeth the door. Openeth. Oh, Asmodeus, most exalted archfiend. What are they doing? Oh, here we go. Tough guy phase. Famously tough guy. I'm asking you what you did! <clears throat> oh, what? We offer our souls to Asmodeus! Receive the souls of your faithful servants! Oh, no. What? Oh, look at that. Is the bottle still floating in air? I point at the screen like an idiot. 
What was that? What the hell, FaZe? Edge. Yeah, he just blew our cover. These were the men that spread the stone sickness throughout Roke. It looks like they were doing it to try and foster unease among the people. What cowards. But more importantly, the resurrection ritual has already begun. What? We must hurry. There's no time. We'll do. I'll go get everyone together. We are all together. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm itching for a save point. Oh, no. Oh, there's a healing point over there. I'll have that at least. It's just a dreadful sign, isn't it? It's so bad that I walk into a room and I said, like, yeah, more game to play. I'm like, oh, look at it. Jesus Christ, this is going to take forever. Oh, no. He's dead. Little's going to die in a second. They're all dead. Oh, my God. Get out of here now. Get out. Go on, FaZe. Get out of there. Escape. Escape. He's going to die before... Right, he got away. He got away. Tactics. Who's alive? I can't revive anyone. How do I get round to that healing thing then? I really need it. I wonder if I need to activate the pots to open up a path to get there. Oh, it's the water, so I do have to... Yeah, because they're not going to go in the water, are they? Oh, no. Uh, do you know what? This isn't This isn't happening for me right now. Unfortunately, I can't revive any of my characters. If I can just make it to that green healing point. Oh, there's so many of these pots though. Why are there so many? I guess it wouldn't be so bad. If my party was alive, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? Because I'd just fight these four fights and then be done with it. But my party is mostly dead. Oh no. He's pointing over there, but I already did that one. Have I messed the order up? I have, Anna. Oh my god. <laughs> I wonder if I can make it out of the temple. It's like, because I, I realise what I need is like, I need to be better prepared and I need a save point, basically. How did I get that wrong? Am I seriously? Oh, what? Is he pointing there? Is he? he is, isn't it? So why did... Right, I'm going to see if I can just make my way out. I'm lost. No, 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 no. Right, I need to be better prepared. I need to pay more attention. I've learned my lesson. If you're going to do it, do it properly. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm, fr I'm frankly ashamed of myself for thinking, for not respecting this game enough. For thinking I could just sleepwalk my way through Star Ocean the last faithlessness, whatever it's called. I should have known better. I should have taken it more seriously. And I'm paying the price. I'm being punished for my own arrogance here. For my flippancy. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is a write-off. The enemies of my faith. The enemies of my faith. Oh, that makes me laugh so much. I think the reason it makes me laugh is because they go, the enemies of my faith. But the truth is, I actually don't care about their faith. I'm completely indifferent to it. I don't care beyond the fact they're about to murder someone. That the plot cares about that. I don't even care about The plot cares about the person. Beyond that, it's like, your faith can do whatever. You literally don't care. Look. Look, right. I know... <laughs> I know this video was a waste of time, alright? I know it was. Please, please don't unsubscribe because of this video. Every time I make a video, someone unsubscribes. Please don't. Leave a like if you can. Uh, I promise the next time I'll take it seriously and we'll make some progress and they'll do it properly. I promise. Alright, it'll be better next time. I promise you anything. I promise you anything I like at this point, can't I? There's no consequences if I break the promise. What are we on? 20 hours nearly. My god. Anyway, please look forward to more Star Ocean. I am. I know I'm looking forward to it. You big liar, Mark.